my name is Andrew Smiles. I'm the, from the branch head of Dharma Canberra. Dharma is the Data Management Association. Um, welcome to this webinar. So first of all, I'd just like to start off with uh, acknowledgement to country. So we acknowledge the traditional owners of the country throughout Australia and recognise their continual connection to the land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. So this um, is a part of the uh, is an Intelligent intelligence at work series, which is uh, jointly run by the Institute of Information Management and Dharma Australia. So we've been running a couple of uh, seminars about um, uh, AI, machine learning, and um, how it impacts, impacts on the workplace. Um, so just a bit about Dharma Australia. Dharma Australia is part of Dharma International, which is an international association with about 50, 60 chapters around the world. Uh, Dharma produces the data manager worldly knowledge and produces a data management certification. Uh, the relevance of this webinar is on the right here is the data management um, uh, knowledge wheel and break it down to different areas. And one of the uh, 11 quadrants is document and content management. Um, I have to say 20 years of Dharma. Um, I don't think I've heard very much said about this quadrant. So this is why this uh, uh, webinar is particularly of interest today. To me. So I'd now like to introduce you to um, Vadini Vedinovic, who will talk about IIM. Welcome again. Uh, my name is Vlad Vedinovic. On behalf of the Institute of Information Management, which I represent today, um, the IIM is a professional association that provides a space for a range of information management uh, professionals and practitioners to discuss various trends. Uh, with a mission to inspire, support, and encourage Australia to make the most of out of information. Uh, today's uh, session uh, that we jointly organise with Dharma, Dharma and I am organised, is part of the Information Awareness Month. For 15 years now, this in a collaborative initiative between a range of bodies within the information and data management space, as you can see, some of them, most of them, on the screen. With their logos, uh, which, are, which is an, in a, a month of initiatives where we explore and promote and celebrate better ways of handling information. Uh, I will encourage all of you to use Q&A on the bottom of your screen as part of your Zoom uh, control panel to ask any questions. Uh, because of the number of participants, we have disabled functions to chat and raise hand. And uh, also, please uh, uh, take part of our polling. So, Andrew, can you please uh, activate the first poll? Hope you can see it now. So, in a like, couple of seconds, if you don't mind, just telling us what your primary interest in attending this webinar. With that, I'm passing it back to Andrew. So, I'd like to, I'd like to introduce Mr. Agarini from Expert System in. Um, in Italy from Rome, and uh, he's the Global Partnership um, Director for Expert System. Thank you, thank you, Andrew. Thank you to everyone for participating to this call, uh, and thank you to Dama for giving me this, uh, this opportunity. So um, today I would like to uh, present you what we are doing and what we are uh, in, in this moment uh, uh, working on uh, with the uh, different uh, government organization and different uh, customers uh, to try to use uh, the, the adoption of uh, artificial intelligence and natural language understanding in the fight against uh, COVID-19, but moreover in the fight of future biological, uh, biological threats. So I will uh, try today to do a very, very quick in introduction around uh, what is the challenge in this moment and how we can approach this challenge using uh, methods and technologies that are also typical of the uh, in intelligence process. And then I will use most of the time to show you some, some live demos. And of course, at the end, I will be available for any question um, and any, any doubt that uh, you may have. So a very quick introduction about what Expert System does. I don't want to bore you with this kind of slides, just to tell you that uh, we have uh, 
a very, very uh, long and deep experience in using artificial intelligence to work uh, on problems around lang language. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we are uh, an Italian company, but we have a global presence. Uh, we have uh, offices in many countries, and where we do not have offices, we have outstanding partners, uh, like, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in Australia. And uh, um, really, uh, just uh, uh, a word about the technology. What we do, the technology that we use that is called Cogito, is a technology that is able to take a text and understand what is written in the text. So we have developed uh, this technology in many, many years. Uh, there are behind the technology really hundreds of many years of work and development uh, to create uh, what we call a knowledge graph. So a big graph, a big network uh, with the millions of concepts and millions of relations between concepts that uh, uh, allows the technology to deal with the text as a human being would do. So this is the, the, big, uh, the, big, uh, the big thing that Cogito can provide. Uh, take a text and understand what is, uh, what is, what, what is written uh, inside, uh, inside the text. And we are able to understand it uh, really with the highest level of accuracy in the market as uh, most of the analysts uh, are, uh, are uh, stating. So I stop here with this kind of uh, presentation and I want to uh, introduce uh, uh, the challenge and introduce what we are going to talk uh, uh, today. So everyone uh, uh, knows uh, very well uh, which is the situation that we are uh, um, approaching in this moment. So uh, the spread of the, of the virus uh, is uh, impacting uh, all the world, uh, of course, with different uh, situation uh, for different countries. I'm, of, I'm from Italy and you know very well uh, we, we, which has been the situation for the last two months uh, in Italy. Uh, but uh, really, this is, a, this is a big problem. And it, this big problem, uh, uh, what is really critical for uh, governments, uh, intelligence agencies, health organization, uh, is to, um, let's say, make uh, informed decision. Uh, what they need is to really understand what's happen what is happening, really understand uh, every um, information that is available on the, uh, in the public domain and uh, having uh, all the possible potential insights uh, uh, that cannot be missed. So re really there are a lot of information that needs to be acquired, uh, aggregated, correlated uh, in order to arrive to draw uh, conclusions. And the most important thing is that uh, in this situation uh, you have uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, the need to look for something that you already know. So, for example, you know that uh, uh, some previous uh, uh, pandemics and uh, disease was showing specific symptoms, but in many situations you do not really know what you look for because it's something completely new. So, in this, uh, in this uh, situation, what is uh, typical uh, that is done by, uh, by this kind of organization to try to understand uh, uh, which is the big problem is to try to apply uh, the typical process that you have in an intelligence uh, cycle. This is always the same process uh, when you need to uh, deal with a lot of information and you need to get intelligence from this information. It, uh, you can talk about economic problems, you can talk about uh, terrorism and crime, you can talk as in this way uh, about, uh, about a disease. So what you need to do really at the beginning is to plan where you, what you need to do, where you want to collect your information, what you want to look inside of this information. The idea here is that you plan what you want to uh, understand. At that, uh, at that point, you can start the collection of your, of your data from open sources, from social networks, from news, uh, from uh, internal data like medical reports uh, and uh, uh, calls to emergency number and so on. Then you need, of course, to normalize your data because you are collecting data from many different sources, maybe in many many different uh, uh, languages uh, since uh, the, 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 the pandemic is uh, really impacting uh, all the world. And, and in, in this case, uh, we are uh, um, applying uh, automatic translation uh, uh, solution to have everything in English to be, to be compared and to be analyzed. 
the very important uh, next step is the processing of uh, what you are going to, what you are analyzing. So uh, thanks to the technology that we have seen, thanks to artificial intelligence, you can really understand every single aspect and you will see it uh, in a moment during the demo, both from a medical perspective, uh, app applying specific uh, uh, taxonomies used in, medicals, uh, in medical processes, but also other 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 uh, taxonomies let's imagine uh, uh, how impo important is in this moment the impact that this uh, virus is uh, uh, having on uh, business uh, in uh, is having on normal uh, uh, life of citizens is having for emotions uh, for the citizens for crime and so on so uh, really you need to look at the data in many different perspectives in many different ways uh, once you have uh, processed uh, all the data, you can pass to the exploitation. So to really uh, extract only what you need to know, not uh, so extract from the large amount of data, really uh, what, it, what is important for your process in order to allow analysts to, to, to make their analysis and to disseminate the results to uh, the decision makers and uh, all the people that needs uh, to uh, quickly identify uh, potential issues and to mitigate uh, crisis, uh, crisis effects. So uh, let's stop here with the slides and I would like to pass to something much more interesting uh, um, and see the, 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 the technology on action. So let's start, uh, as I said, the, the, a very important uh, part uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this process is the capability to understand what is written in, in, uh, in a text. I'm taking here uh, um, a simple, uh, an article that I found uh, uh, yesterday on the, on the web, uh, describing the fact that uh, new potential symptoms, additional symptoms uh, has been found uh, uh, related to COVID-19. It is an interesting article describing that the fact that not only uh, cough, uh, fever, uh, sore throat and uh, other uh, symptoms uh, that were already known are related with this virus, but there are other potential symptoms. So in this moment, I'm just taking very quickly the text that you find in this, uh, in this article to see how uh, we can automatically understand and extract all the relevant information that you can find in this text. So in this moment, I'm just applying the cogito technology to the text to understand what is written in the text. What you see here is a very simple, um, what we call a cognitive map. So we have collected all the different uh, concepts that you can find in this text and clusterized them according to the, their meaning. So uh, you find in the text many disease, respiratory disease, symptoms, and other things. So you find people, you find organization, you find physical phenomenon, and so on. But the most important part is the relation between these uh, concepts that you can find in the text. Let's see, for example, the concept of coronavirus in this text is put in relation to some symptoms that includes loss of smell, chill, taste, pain, uh, symptom without fever, and so on. So uh, here you see that without having read the, the, the article, thanks to the capability to really understand the text, we have arrived to a a structured information that, of course, include the capability to put in relation concepts and uh, and other other uh, uh, and the symptoms. So, for example, thanks to the fact that uh, in the network we have uh, those millions of concepts and millions of relation, we can see that, for example, we recognize that the calf is a respiratory disease, that is a disease, that is a kind of illness, that is a state. And that, for example, the bark is a kind of calf that is uh, uh, similar to a dog's bark. So this is uh, the, the knowledge of the, of, of the language, the knowledge of English. In the article, the system has been able to put in relation this uh, calf, okay, 
as a symptom, as a recognized symptom of the coronavirus. This is, a, let's say, uh, a simple way of analyzing the text. It's, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a medician, I have not specific uh, capabilities and knowledge on health, but I can read an English text and understand what is written here. As I said, it's very important to, to have different view and different perspective on the same text. So now I am analyzing the same text with a different demo. In this way, it is a demo customized and verticalized for life science. So it includes a lot of knowledge specific for, for, uh, for the health. And you see here includes a lot of typical medical taxonomies. Um, I don't know how, no, how um, if you know, but uh, this MESH, this NOMAD, the ICD-9, ICD-10, the UMLS are typical uh, taxonomies used, used in medical literature. And so, for example, according to the uh, MESH taxonomy, I can identify inside the text specific uh, disease of the respiratory tract, specific symptoms, uh, and relation. So here there, is, there are gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, and I can identify specific biological process and so on. So the same article as before, now seen with the, the, with the eye of a researcher, eye of, the, of a medical uh, uh, practitioner that is also able to identify a relation of uh, um, close here between the coronavirus symptoms that are including cough, fever, and shortness of breath, okay? So, and the shortness of breath is a, a kind of dyspnea and uh, uh, is in relation with other very, very specific uh, concept used by, uh, by medicians. So, the same article, I I understand it from a generic point of view. I can understand it from a specific uh, medician point, uh, point of view. If uh, I apply this technology to a lot of data, if you remember the slide that I've shown you before with the in typical intelligence process, uh, I said that I could collect information from many different sources, news, blogs, social networks, and internal data. And try to understand and analyze this information from all these sources. So let's go on the platform. Okay, uh, here uh, in this demo, we are using of course uh, demo, demo data. And uh, in this moment uh, in the system, I have more than a half a million documents. Of course, this is a, this is a demo. In reality, we can have uh, millions and millions of documents acquired from many different sources. So here you see generic sources like uh, um, news sites, more specific sources related to bio biology and biomedical and things like that, also information coming from White House and uh, um, uh, CIA, but also information that, for example, coming from social networks. Here we have a lot of tweets uh, coming from uh, different uh, different accounts uh, and uh, also maybe related to uh, different topics. So we are collecting a lot of information, okay, and we are analyzing it in the way that, uh, as you have seen in the previous example. So let's. Uh, 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 as I said, uh, in this situation, you can have typically the, 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 uh, a, a double situation. You have the situation in which you know what you need to look for, okay? Or the situation in which you have a lot of information and you don't know what to look for. So for example, in this first uh, tab, we have this uh, tag cloud, including all the main concepts that you that uh, has been found by the system in the 500 uh, um, thousands uh, document. So you can here you can see here very very specific concepts related to uh, medicine, but also more generic concepts. Uh, let's uh, 
try to stay on the generic side also because uh, I would not be able to uh, discuss around a specific uh, protein or a specific uh, uh, inhibitors or things like that. So uh, let's uh, take the documents related to coronavirus infections and uh, maybe let's uh, filter this document on a specific uh, geographic area. So let's uh, look for Australia. And uh, you see that every time I add something here that are not simple keywords uh, as I would look on, uh, on, on Google, but uh, here I'm using concepts. So I'm using uh, uh, the concept of, of a disease that is the coronavirus infection and the concept of, the, of a geographic area that is, uh, that is Australia. And uh, maybe I want now to look for uh, specific uh, uh, symptoms related to COVID-19. And uh, between uh, these symptoms, uh, for example, here I see uh, fever. Okay, so here you see that every time I'm adding an element to my search, I'm filtering documents. So now I'm, I passed it from the more than 500,000 documents to 246 uh, documents. And uh, of course here I can always have a look at the documents that I have here. I, maybe I want to have uh, uh, an additional uh, uh, filter, maybe I want to, uh, we said before that one of the symptoms was uh, cough. No, no, I do not have here cough, sorry. Uh, or maybe I want to filter on the, mm, mm, some medicine that was, were found uh, around this document. So the idea here is that with one, two, three, four, five clicks, suggested by the system, I was able to filter all the documents that I had in the system and uh, the possibility to look at very, very specific uh, uh, documents. Here, for example, I have uh, documents coming from a, an Australian uh, news site where I can highlight all the different information that I could find in the text and that, for example, there is a person uh, saying that uh, there are 13 people in intensive care units that are being treated with ventilators and so on. It, uh, it includes uh, uh, New South Wales, that it is a specific uh, area of Australia and so on. And I can, of course, have a look always to the original documents to study it more, more in details. So, as I said, I can use in my analysis uh, the possibility to uh, uh, have the um, health perspective. And so here I have uh, looked for specific uh, symptoms that have been identified by, for the COVID-19 uh, uh, outbreak. But uh, for example, one of the uh, typical needs of uh, um, government organization is also to evaluate economic impact and social impacts on the, on the population. So keeping always the filter of uh, coronavirus infection and uh, Australia, I want, for example, now concentrate my analysis on uh, business decrease. That is, of course, a very, very important aspect uh, in this moment. And you see here always uh, on this uh, column, uh, I received the suggestions uh, um, from the system that has, re has already analyzed and read all the 500,000 documents. And here you can see that one of the uh, main elements is the number of employee uh, decrease. So again, I have arrived to 25 results just by one, two, three, four clicks on, this, uh, on the system that has already analyzed all the information. And uh, for example, I can find here an article uh, related to a famous, uh, um, a famous uh, store that is going to close uh, some of the shops. And of course, uh, in this case, uh, uh, 
uh, including uh, problems uh, uh, on the population, uh, including uh, uh, the um, decrease of employee and so on. So you see, you see here that uh, the different uh, geographic area has been identified, the people, and as I said before, uh, the fact that uh, there are specific uh, business related topics like the business decrease and uh, here I can see the specific uh, sentences where this problem is, uh, is um, highlighted. Of course, as usual, I can always uh, uh, retrieve the original document, but uh, you know, here I'm doing a very, very simple example, but what is the need uh, for analysts, for uh, the people that uh, need to take decision uh, in, uh, in a government is to really have the uh, view of uh, what is going on. So the possibility to analyze all the information uh, available. Let's uh, do also another very, very simple example. Uh, let's go back to our uh, uh, query and let's have a look, uh, for example, to uh, the uh, the relations uh, uh, with the emotion that you can find uh, in the population and you can find special, especially on, the, on, uh, on, social, uh, on social networks. So here, for example, you see that there is a relation between the emotion of fear and the politics of the national government. I'm always uh, keeping as a, as a main filter the coronavirus infection in Australia. So I want to add the, now to my query, the relation between the um, emotion of fear with the government uh, decision. And again, you see here many, many articles and we have more, more or less 300 articles. And for example, I see here something related with uh, what the Prime Minister Scott Morrison uh, is deciding that, of course, uh, is creating uh, fear, maybe stress uh, or uh, other or anger in some way uh, in the population. Okay, so here you have seen uh, how we can, uh, starting from a large amount of data, my 500. Um, thousands of uh, documents and explore the information without having uh, a, a precise idea of uh, what to look for, but uh, having the capability, um, having the capability uh, of the system to really understand uh, what, is, uh, what is written in, the, in this document. Uh, another uh, situation, another challenge that uh, um, typically uh, government organization and corporates have uh, in this moment uh, is uh, the situation in which they already know what to look for, but they need uh, someone that is able to quickly identify the information. So for example, imagine the fact that uh, in the future, uh, after this COVID-19, unfortunately, we may have uh, uh, new new viruses. We, we may have a COVID-21 or a COVID-23 or something like that. What we already know is what are the symptoms. So maybe uh, one possibility is to know already a disease, know which are the typical symptoms connected with this uh, disease, and use the system to look for information around uh, around uh, these uh, symptoms. Uh, ideally, uh, I could uh, uh, identify quickly that, for example, uh, in a specific uh, area, there are a lot of people reporting uh, uh, fever, reporting uh, cough, reporting uh, other problems, and these uh, should help me in, uh, in quickly identify and alert uh, what, what is happening. See, for example, this uh, tweet. We can always see the original content, okay? Here we have a, a person that uh, uh, is saying that it all started in a dry cough, but you can feel all the plagma, plagma stuck in your throat and it's such a nuisance, so you give too much effort in trying to treat them up, okay? So 
if uh, I identify that in many different, uh, uh, in, a, in a very specific uh, geographic area, there are a lot of people reporting the same problems, this should create an alert for me, okay? Or imagine that uh, I'm, uh, 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 I'm in a, a World Health Organization or a regional health organization, and I want to monitor what, uh, what uh, for example, big pharma are doing. So for example, I want to monitor all the information that uh, uh, arise around the findings of a, uh, for a, a, a vaccine, okay, a vaccine. Here, for example, I've created another target that is uh, the vaccine for the coronavirus and uh, all the main uh, uh, pharma organization. And again, I want to retrieve uh, all, the inf all the documents, all the articles, all the tweets around, around this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this topic. So to uh, arrive to a conclusion and to leave space uh, for question, uh, questions and answering, what I want to show here is that uh, having a, a, a technology that is able to quickly understand what is written in documents in many different languages uh, passing from uh, tweets on social networks uh, to uh, scientific uh, papers and research and extract all the information that you really need uh, this could be really a, a tool uh, for a, that could give you a tremendous support in this situation. Just to give you some examples, this kind of platform is in this moment used by a, a world uh, organization uh, uh, dealing with um, chemical and biological threats uh, that is monitoring all uh, what is uh, happening around uh, around this uh, this uh, this pandemic but on the other side we are working for example with a big uh, uh, food uh, industry uh, i'm talking about uh, 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 probably uh, one of the biggest uh, food industry in the world so uh, we are talking about uh, um, a, a company that is uh, uh, whose products are for sure also in your uh, in your kitchens, that is in this moment monitoring what is happening around uh, their supply chain. So imagine uh, what is uh, if they. Mm, I, I don't make uh, the name of the of the company, but imagine that uh, uh, this company uh, needs to. Uh, um, extract uh, um, cacao for, for the chocolate production and needs to uh, take the cacao in specific area, for example, of the, uh, in, in Africa or in South America and uh, work on it and uh, move it uh, in the um, supply chain to produce uh, their products. The fact that, uh, for example, uh, in, uh, in a specific geographic area, there is a lockdown and uh, all the plants are closed, that could be a real problem. And again, they need to analyze a lot of information, a lot of documents, and understand, try to understand what is going on. And on the other side, trying to understand what is going on on the consumer side. And so looking at what are the possible impacts of this lockdown on their uh, on their business i stop here with my presentation and i pass the the control back to um, vlad and andrew uh, to collect also potential questions and uh, doubts that um, could have come in the meantime Thank you, Maurizio. Um, yes, we do have some questions, but before we start asking those questions, let me share with uh, everyone the results of the poll that we did, just as of interest. It should be on your screens now. Okay, so we have a few interesting questions. Uh, I'll start with the first one. Um, how, so I'll combine two very similar questions from two different uh, participants. So how do you filter misinformation or noise? And the, the second part is, can you identify fake news or fake information source? 
Thanks. Very, very good questions. And uh, the, 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 this is uh, typically the pain that uh, a lot of customers uh, have. So uh, related to missed questions, uh, uh, to missed information, sorry. Uh, of course, uh, there is not uh, a magic uh, recipe for that. Uh, as I said in my presentation, a very important uh, activity in the mm, intelligence process is the planning and the collection of data. And uh, what uh, typically um, analysts uh, find uh, working on the extracted information is that maybe they could uh, see that they are missing something. So uh, the fact that, for example, uh, I don't know, from a specific geographic area, uh, there are a, a lot of information related to a specific topic, and in, a, in another geographic area, this information are missing. So it's a, it's a, it's a cycle. Uh, you start you plan, you collect, you process the information, you analyze it, and why, uh, why uh, during uh, the analysis of information, you discover that you probably need to analyze something else. Uh, a very important activity that we support in this process is the possibility also to discover new sources. So, uh, as I said uh, in this presentation, here we are analyzing, we have decided some specific sources uh, to analyze. So I consider BBC Health, for example, a very important channel uh, for, for my information, but uh, a very important uh, um, in, um, source that you could use is also Google search. So I don't know which is the source, the source that I want to monitor. I make a search on Google, I receive 100,000 results from Google and I acquire these 100,000 results and use the capability of Cogito to analyze this information to discover new source and add new, new source to my, to my source selection. Uh, second question, fake news. Again, uh, it doesn't exist uh, a, a magic recipe. Uh, we are involved in, in uh, various uh, projects uh, dealing with the fake news detection, also with some of the big players uh, in, the, in the media sector. Uh, it's, uh, let's say, trying to discover a, a fake source, uh, a fake news, uh, it's, uh, it's a mix of uh, human, uh, human brain, human brain, uh, human comprehension, and technology. So the fact that, for example, from a specific source, uh, you are receiving uh, uh, always the same kind of news uh, related with the same kind of topics, the fact that uh, you are putting in relation business impacts, for example, with uh, emotions that uh, tend to arise uh, fear, anger, or stress uh, when reading that news, could help you in uh, identify that probably that is a fake news or maybe a misleading information that that is the, ba the because a fake news it's easy but uh, many times you have the situation in which uh, the information is right the way in which the information is presented is a bit misleading uh, trying to arise specific emotions in uh, who is reading uh, who is reading it Thank you, Maurizio. The second question is, how does the emotions taxonomy work? So it's a, it's a very, very complex uh, um, taxonomy. So what, when we work on taxonomies, uh, on emotions, we do not uh, only uh, rely on the fact that uh, there is written uh, good, excellent, or there is written bad or very bad. Um, I made a very, very quick introduction at the beginning, but as I said, uh, Cogito is relying on a very, very complex uh, knowledge graph with the knowledge of millions, millions of concepts and millions of relations. And thanks to that, we can identify up to 80 different emotions that you can find in the text. So for example, if I take, uh, uh, I don't know, the first document that you see here, and I have a look in details at the emotion taxonomy, okay, and I see here that uh, uh, there is a sentence that has uh, arised uh, anxiety, 
okay, that is arising anxiety. And you see here this sentence, the deeply troubled Morrison government is anxious to, okay, here there is an, the, the word anxious. I was looking for a, a different example. Let's see if here for fear, for example, okay. Here we are talking about a threat that comes uh, at a time of friction between the countries with Australia pursuing an independent review of the origins of COVID-19 and approach that has been rejected by China, okay? Here we are talking about a threat of something. And typically a threat is something that uh, arises fear, okay? Here mm, is a, a simple explanation, but here this is the way in which we work. So we analyze and we understand the concepts in the in the text and then try to understand what kind of emotion these concepts can uh, arise in uh, who is reading uh, uh, who is reading the the text of course uh, this can be customized uh, okay when we work for companies we are requested for example to analyze brand reputation and in that case they, they are looking for other emotions uh, this is something that we can uh, customize in many many different ways Okay, thank you. So the next one is what business intelligence or artificial intelligence technologies could you to intelligence platform based on? Oh, well, the technology has been entirely developed by, by ourselves. So I did a very, very uh, quick, uh, quick uh, demo at the beginning, but uh, uh, imagine that uh, what we have uh, uh, created uh, in, the, in the years uh, is this uh, uh, big, uh, uh, big knowledge graph uh, that I was mentioning before. So for example, if uh, I enter in the knowledge graph, I, I have written here a simple, a simple word, Jaguar, okay? I know that in English, Jaguar can mean an animal or can be a luxury car. And if I choose the meaning of luxury car, I know that uh, the Jaguar is a kind of car uh, and uh, here you see if I move to the concept of car, I have many kind of cars. So imagine a very big dictionary that instead of uh, being organized in a list of words is organized in a big graph and all the concepts uh, are represented by a knot in the graph and all these knots are in relation between them. So the relation between a car and station wagon is the fact that the station wagon is a kind of car. But I have also a relation between concepts and verbs. So for example, the relation between uh, car and, um, I don't know, um, run or uh, sell or something else is the fact that the car can run in the meaning of going, uh, going very fast. Thanks to this uh, kind of relation, there are many others, but I don't want to bore uh, all the people with uh, uh, grammatical and, uh, and um, analytical information. But just to give you a very, very simple example, thanks to this, uh, I can distinguish the fact that if I wrote that uh, uh, my Jaguar is eating meat, I, uh, I understand that we are talking about an animal that is feeding himself with the flesh of animals. If I write that my jaguar is eating gas, I understand that uh, we are talking about a car that is consuming petrol. This is a very, very silly example, but just to uh, explain how the technology works. Uh, of course, uh, uh, I, as you have seen before, I have applied this to a complex article talking about the symptoms of coronavirus and the system was able to understand all the symptoms and relation between symptoms and disease. And uh, again, I can apply it as you have seen uh, in this other demo to the fact that uh, a document talking about uh, a decision from the government is inspiring fear in the population. Thank you, Maurizio. So the next one is, can scenarios be saved and retrieved so the user can monitor changes over time? 
Absolutely, yes. This is a, a typical needs of the analysts when de dealing with this kind of information. So you can save uh, this, this scenario and see the changing during, uh, during the time. You can create uh, alerts for, for you as soon as uh, something new happens around a specific uh, scenario that you, you have created. Or you can look also, you can create your analytics. So for example, uh, I don't know, uh, the, how the, um, you see here, I've created, uh, for example, the emotion, the main emotions around what Boris Johnson is saying, or the, uh, around uh, Pope Francis, Donald Trump, uh, or whatever. And here I have uh, the, uh, count of uh, documents that are in, uh, inspiring this specific uh, uh, emotions around uh, that uh, that person. This is an example. Uh, I can create uh, many, many different uh, situations. So, for example, uh, the presence of a respiratory disease in a specific uh, geographic area and also how this is changing during, uh, during the time and how this is in, put in relation with specific uh, vaccines and so, and so on. Okay, next one is, let's say we have millions of scientific documents. As a researcher, a researcher need to quickly identify the search gaps in a particular area. How would Kujito help in this scenario? And further to that, uh, with the system running fast uh, enough in the real time, uh, to, to deal with millions of documents? Yes, okay. Uh, first of all, yes, we can uh, deal with millions of documents. We have uh, uh, installation in uh, many important organizations that really deals with, with millions of documents. So um, there is not a problem of speed. It's of course uh, just a, a matter of uh, correctly size the, the, the installation with the needed uh, uh, resources for dealing with millions of documents. Uh, for the first question, uh, very important. Uh, it doesn't exist uh, a button uh, that you can uh, push and have the answer to your question. So what uh, uh, this solution is doing uh, is supporting an expert, supporting an analyst in correctly understand a problem, correctly understand an issue, okay? So uh, you cannot expect this platform to tell you which are the gaps be between uh, one research and another research, between one topic and another topic. The system can help you in identify the fact that, for example, in the last period, we have had a lot, I take this, uh, this, uh, this graph that you see on the screen, we see that uh, uh, there are a lot of documents, for example, dealing with uh, respiratory tract infections. Uh, a good number of documents uh, related with bacterial infections and mycosis. A lot of documents related to various disease. Very, very few documents related with skin disease. I don't know, I'm not an expert. I don't know if this, this has a, a real meaning at all, but maybe I could say, well, there are really few people, few researchers that are dealing with skin disease. Uh, this may be a gap, I don't know, okay? The system is highlighting the situation and very quickly giving me information about uh, what is going on. In the, in the information that I'm monitoring. And of course, I can always uh, filter on that. And I want to have a look at the specific documents uh, that deals with skin disease and understand that maybe uh, a problem at the skin is also related with the virus. Don't know, uh, again, I'm, I'm just uh, playing around uh, the topic, but the idea is that the system helps me in identifying which are, which are the, 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 the topics. And then of course, uh, it's uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the researcher brain, in the human brain, the capability to take a decision. The system will never take a decision for you. The system will give you the right information at the right moment. 
Okay. The next question is, what capability could you to have for identifying locations of new outbreaks? Of new, sorry? Outbreaks, new uh, COVID outbreaks. Hey, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's a nice uh, a nice question, and of course, I would like to have uh, the 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 the, um, uh, the the right answer for that. Uh, what we can do is, uh, for example, uh, as I said, monitoring uh, I don't know uh, social networks, uh, monitoring uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, monitoring what people is uh, is doing, and uh, filter that information from some of the uh, symptoms that we know as related with uh, with a with a potential virus so we know that fever that uh, breathing problems uh, okay are related to uh, to 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 the outbreak okay and i can also add uh, maybe other symptoms, um, don't know, or other disease and conditions. So, for example, uh, heart disease. Um, I don't know if it has a, a meaning. So, I'm filtering all the information related with these uh, uh, symptoms, and then maybe I want to have a look at the geograph geography of the tweets and see that, for example, in this moment, I have a lot of documents that are related to USA lot of documents related to central europe of course uh, always the china situation and we have something here in central africa and maybe i want to explore why there are information in this area okay as i said there is no a definite answer there is always the human brain that needs to work on document but here with the three clicks i have identified that there are documents in a specific geographic area that are dealing with these uh, symptoms and these should uh i don't know arise uh, maybe an alert or give me a hint well you should have a look at it Okay. The next question is, uh, as this coronavirus is a new area with a immature taxonomy, what is the capability for organizations to share their taxonomy extensions or customize it? All the taxonomies that you see here can be highly customized for, for any evidence. And this is something that uh, expert system can do, but it's something that our partners uh, normally, normally does for customers. So uh, here in this demo, I've put together uh, medical taxonomies, uh, economic taxonomies, uh, social impacts, uh, just to show all the capabilities and all the possibilities, but in reality, our customers are interested in one topic or in the other. So the big food, uh, food industry that I was mentioning before, of course, is not really interested in uh, understanding if in the document that we are talking about uh, the WDHD1 gene, or we are talking about uh, the immune, uh, immune sera, okay? This is something that is, for example, interesting for uh, a, 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 clinical, uh, a clinical research center, a pharma, or something like that. On the other side, uh, the, 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 the food industry is interested in uh, closures, uh, in uh, um, plants that are uh, um, closed, uh, and things like that. So. Uh, Every customer has different needs. As usual, uh, if you take a, an article on the, on the newspaper, uh, Maurizio reads uh, this article with a specific view, a specific perspective, a specific interest. Vlad would, uh, would read the same article with a di completely different uh, point of view. Thank you. And the final question for today, we are running out of time, is how does the system handle ongoing data feed with very big data, such as millions of patient documents, without structure or being semi-structured? Uh, well, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's not a problem. So working with unstructured information is uh, typically our, uh, our uh, core capability. 
the fact that we are uh, uh, collecting millions of these data in a feed, uh, uh, as I said before, is just uh, a, a matter of uh, correctly sizing, uh, sizing the platform. We have in this moment a platform running um, with very important uh, customers uh, and dealing with uh, tens of millions of documents. So really that's, that's not a problem. Thank you, Maurizio. And I'm Thank just you. going to uh, very quickly, uh, if you don't mind stopping the share of sure. your screen. Thank you. Just gonna share some information about future sessions and where we are now in a second. Okay, so first of all, I want to thank you, uh, Mauricio, for a brilliant presentation, a very exciting uh, uh, technology and its uh, implementation in discovery and management of biologic, potential biological threats. Um, I also want to expand my uh, thanks to our sponsors, Automated Reasoning Alliance in partnership with NRAI, who made this uh, session possible with support. Um, on, the, on their behalf, the Automated Reasoning Alliance is an Australian-based research solution development company, uh, and NRAI, a deep tech company, which is so focused on solving complex problems by combining their expertise in artificial intelligence and range of industries. Uh, in terms of the next event, please save the date for the 28th of May. Our guests, uh, we have a very exciting uh, presentation by the representatives of the World Economic Forum who have created a strategic intelligence tool to address a range of uh, world topics and obviously COVID-19 is one of the hot topics. So again, Thursday 28th of May, please uh, uh, join us for a talk on uh, how hybrid models can create contextual intelligence. Uh, again, uh, this event is part of the Information Awareness Month. Uh, please visit the Information Awareness Month calendar with plenty of other events that hopefully are of your interest uh, to you. And again, thank you all for participating and uh, spending time with us today. Thank you all and hope to see you at one of the future events. Thank you also for Dharma and IIM for making this uh, webinar possible. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye-bye.